All right, Tom. Now you're going to teach me uh, fly fishing. Yeah, I'm going to teach you a little bit about fly fishing uh, song. This is a, a really fun way to fish. It's a little different than most forms because what you use for bait are artificial lures, are actually called uh, flies. They're very light, usually for the type of fishing we're doing, they're very small. And you usually have, there are two types. There's a dry fly, which floats on the surface. And that's always fun because you see things coming up, yeah. grabbing it off the surface. And then there are uh, wet flies, which are weighted flies, like this little one here. And these you fish under the water. Under the water. This particular one is meant to look like a midge. And then we have these other ones that look like worms. And then fish will pick those up under the water. I'm Song Chan of we said USGS. And I'm uh, Tom Cuffney with the USGS. And uh, for the last uh, 10 years now, we've been studying the effects of urbanization uh, across the United States. Uh, we've looked now in uh, nine major metropolitan areas, uh, the Raleigh area, Boston, uh, Birmingham, Milwaukee, Green Bay, Dallas, Fort Worth, Denver, Portland, and Salt Lake City. Um, since three years ago, I started working with Tom and the USGS the colleagues on this uh, EU's project. And my role here is uh, mostly data analysis and modeling. Yeah, the EU's project that we're working on is uh, the effects of urbanization on stream ecosystems, which is where the EU's acronym comes from. And we've really been looking at the effects of urbanization on fish, invertebrates, algae, habitat, and chemistry. And we've really been using Song a lot, and he's helped us in developing models that help explain what's happening in these streams and what helps us compare among metropolitan areas and also to predict possible changes and the effects of possible mitigation procedures. The flies themselves are so light that they really can't be cast. What you have to use to cast in a fly rod is the fly line itself. And the fly line is a colored line that you have here. And these are weight forward fly lines. That means that most of the weight is in the first section of the fly line. And you use this to throw the fly. The clear monofilament part, this is the leader. And this is what connects your fly to your fly line. And you're constantly replacing this. And you use different weights of leader depending on what type of fishing you're doing. If you're fishing for very small trout, you may use very, very light line. If you're fishing for bass, you might use a much heavier line, heavier, line. heavier uh, monofilament. Now, one particular thing we did was the multi-level modeling. And another thing we did was the Bayesian network modeling to understand how the uh, land use changes affects the stream ecosystems. Now the multi-level models were uh, very important in, for, uh, for me at least because it helped us explain why we were seeing different relationships uh, between urbanization and uh, stream effects in different parts of the country. And that method really helped us explain why we were seeing these uh, different results. The trick to fly fishing is that the fly rod itself is a big spring and you need to use that spring to cast the line. The nice thing about the multi-level uh, models from the perspective of uh, application is that it showed that there were other interferences in terms of uh, factors that were affecting urbanization like agriculture in mm -hmm. Milwaukee Green Bay and uh, Denver and uh, Dallas Fort Worth, which turned out to That's be, right. uh, That's right. were masking the effects we saw yes. of urbanization, as well as the ability to incorporate uh, climatic factors, That's temperature right. and precipitation, That's which right. varied among the metropolitan areas. And these are examples about the variables operating at the very different uh, spatial temporal scales. Right. We we're looking at the land use cover, uh, urban coverage, uh, agricultural coverage, which is something very at the watershed scale. 
but when we talk about uh, the uh, background or antecedent agricultural land use, that's in the regional scale. The other thing that uh, we we did was looking at the, the Bayesian network models. That's right. And um, those are very interesting models uh, because they employed a lot of uh, prior knowledge. Yeah. And that's something that uh, I think was rather unique in that was the ability to go out and uh, find experts and talk to them about what should be happening in these systems and that's what right. we expected to happen and then actually looking at the data. So that's could you right. talk a little bit about um, how that process works? All right, so now this is the one big difference between the Bayesian statistics and the classical statistical inference. In the classical statistical inference, we based our inference purely on data. And uh, all the other previous, previous experience and all this doesn't count. And essentially, every time when you go out collect data, trying to develop model, you are trying to reinvent the uh, wheel. With the Bayesian statistics, you can actually uh, logically combine information from various uh, different sources. There are other types of casts where you can roll cast, like this, which is where you just don't have a line behind you, you just pull it back and roll it over. And that can be used a lot when you have uh, something behind you that uh, prevents you from false casting like this. All right, should we go upstream and give her a try? Yeah. All right, do it. But from an ecological standpoint, in terms of just trying to understand the ecology, we've also uh, been working on a number of models looking at uh, understanding how specific elements That's of the right. biology. That's right. So the uh, uh, statistics, fundamentally, is uh, tool for learning. Science are used in two different ways. One is for helping uh, management and helping uh, uh, support decision making. The other is uh, in learning and making inference about what's behind the uh, natural phenomena. And from a statistical perspective, statistic is always a tool for learning from data. So you hang on to that. And then stop. Yep. <laughs> I can get can really get used to this. Oh yeah, man. Well, you gotta gotta get a rod. So Song, um, over the last three years we've done a lot of modeling now that's, right. um, that's helped us both understand how urbanization changes across the country as well as to uh, look at possible things that uh, we can do to mitigate those effects. So uh, in a nutshell, what do you think are the three most important things that we've uh, come up with in the last couple of years? Um, I would say the first thing is that the a complicated systems need a little bit more complicated model. Model, yep. And uh, I think that the the fact that we're seeing different responses to urbanization in different regions of the country, and that the uh, antecedent land use has a strong effect on the, how urbanization impacts systems. That's is important. one thing we feel that that's a very interesting. Right. It's the most important, most interesting outcome from that uh, from the uh, multi-level analysis. Right. And then the, the third thing I think that's been uh, really important is the, uh, the Bayesian network models mm -hmm. that's allowed us to uh, make relatively simple ma models that managers can make adjustments to to kind of get some perspective on what management decisions would do in terms of changing the resource. That's right. And uh, the Bayesian network model allows us to pull information from various sources and uh, making a sound scientific judgment and right. management strategy. So uh, working with you in the last few years, we've come a long way from those simple uh, regression models that, that I did initially. And to me, working with you guys is that uh, I get to come out and actually look at the, how the data was collected and uh, the real stream, the real ecosystem. Yep. So uh, it's been good talking to you, but yep. uh, let's get back to fishing. Yes, let's go.
This is just like learning statistics. So what's the probability that you're going to catch a fish again? Well, so far zero. <laughs> it's the same That's as my, my probability. I think this is very classical. Yeah.